This is a brief video documentation of what happened during the world's largest single school solar powering of laptops installation in Las Caubas, Haiti. This project is the result of long-term partnership between the Haitian Ministry of Education, Illinois Institute of Technology, and Green Wi-Fi. The Haitian Ministry of Education asked Illinois Institute of Technology and Green Wi-Fi to devise, design, engineer a solar powering solution for one laptop per child laptops um, at schools, at primary schools in Haiti. We have worked at IIT for the last two semesters on designing the solar powering solution, as well as fundraising and working on the educational components of the project. Because this project is not just a technology project, it's also a human infrastructure, human capability, infrastructure, technology, ecosystem project. The solution that we designed for the Haitian school using solar power to charge laptops is a little bit unique in its design as the entire system runs on DC. Most computers do run on DC but have to be converted from AC electricity. So with most major solar installations, the electricity is converted to from DC to AC and back to DC, which introduces about a 30% loss in the system. To keep our system lower in cost and high efficiency, we've eliminated the AC portion and we go direct from DC to DC in charging the laptops. Our system is designed to charge 500 laptops at a time. It's also designed to be replicable, sustainable, scalable, and as simple and straightforward as possible, which is important because it was put to the test during this trip. About a week before our trip, we found out that due to circumstances beyond our control, the school that we had been planning to implement at was no longer able to accommodate us. So we made the, the switch to the school that we had already been planning to stay at, and we're implementing at the EFACAP school in Las Caubas, Haiti. We performed this installation in one week. So, here's what we did. Our DC solar system uh, starts here on the roof uh, with our solar panels. Here we have 10 solar panels and they're connected in sets of two. And then they're, all the wiring runs down uh, and eventually goes into uh, the room where we have our, the rest of our equipment. Uh, so we have in total five sets of wires that go down uh, to the room. Uh, then the, the biggest challenge that we faced up here on the roof was actually mounting the solar panels to the tin roof. Uh, originally we had planned on using a full snap track mounting system, uh, but due to complications in shipping, uh, mostly in the customs department, we lost half of our uh, mounting equipment. Uh, and that half was how to mount the rails to the actual roof. Uh, we had all the equipment to mount the solar panels to the rails, but not from the rails to the roof. Uh, so we had to come up with a new solution. Now, the, the current roof uh, has tin that sits on steel trusses, and that tin is connected to the trusses with these J-hooks, uh, and the bolts end up sticking up out of the roof. Uh, so we decided to use those existing bolts uh, to attach the rails uh, directly to the roof. Uh, and that, was, that gave us the opportunity to have a strong connection to the roof uh, that actually ended up making it even more secure. Um, and then we attached the solar panels to the railing. And as you can see, it all ended up working out very well. And we're happy with it how it ended up. So the wires are connected to solar panels up on the roof and there's, uh, there's 10 solar panels total connected in series of two. Solar panels uh, series one and two are connected in this combiner box and solar panels uh, three, four, and five are connected in this combiner box. Now originally, when the original design called for all five uh, sets to go in one combiner box and we would parallel feed the J 
charge controllers, but during the installation um, and during reviewing the instructions for the uh, charge controller, we realized that the manufacturer does not recommend hooking the charge controllers in parallel. So we had to add another combiner box and split the total of five uh, and two series connected. Now, the wires come from uh, the combiner box to the charge controller. There's a positive and a negative. Essentially, you need to just collect the individual uh, parallel, uh, uh, I guess, uh, solar panels. They come out and they feed the charge controllers. Each has its positive and its negative. And uh, they also have a positive that comes from the battery bank. In this case, we're running 12 volt uh, DC. Uh, we're keeping it DC. Um, and we have uh, a fuse for the battery bank, a shutoff switch for the battery bank. And then uh, each charge controller gets a positive, And the load uh, center box gets a positive as well. And uh, there's three uh, negatives coming from the battery bank, one to the load center, and then one to each charge controller. And the other part, the other component of the room that's wired into uh, the load center are the lights. So the lights were rewired to be DC. We reused the existing conduit and existing switch. Uh, some of the problems we faced, uh, we didn't have any feeding tape, so we had to use existing wires to pull and re-pull uh, some of the new wiring that was required for that. So from there, it goes, continues on to the loads, which I believe Simon will be talking about that a little more. So our original plan was a little more complicated, a little more difficult than we had anticipated for our charging solution. Basically, we wanted a lot of soldered, soldered connections that, were, that ended up being too loose fragile and uh, not connected enough. Uh, we're charging about 400 laptops, and if we were to solder all those together, that's a lot of joints, so we had to think of another idea. So our current idea, we have the third circuit breaker box here with two switches. Each switch breaks and um, turns on for two tables. From there, we run the wire across, and our system utilizes wall boxes and table boxes. We have one on the top and one underneath the table. So our wall boxes run the wires from the, from the circuit breaker box down and to the next box. As we go down to the table, um, this, the junction box on the table is both on top and underneath, then break apart to all the table. From the junction boxes out is actually how the laptops get power. Um, inside of the junction boxes, all five of the pigtails for um, the table are combined um, here, along with the wires from the junction box on the wall coming from the power source. So they're all combined together, and then they go out in what we call pigtails. Each of the positive and negative ends are combined together and soldered, and then stuck with the other ones. Um, they go out into 10 separate um, plugs for the laptops, and then that's how the laptops are powered. As mentioned, this project goes beyond the technology and is about education in many ways. It's a hands-on, real-world experience for the IIT students. We created lesson plans about solar energy for the Haitian students and teachers and got to test them out. We're working with the local person on site charged with maintenance of the system after we leave. And we also held a book drive and set up a library at the school. So when we arrived at the library at Las Caobas, it was actually totally empty. The shelves were totally empty. But uh, we organized earlier in the year a book drive at a French-American school in San Francisco. So we actually brought books on the book drive. Uh, and there was also a donation from the uh, European Union. Uh, that was at Las Caobas already. So we gathered all of the books, the ones we brought, the ones already there uh, from the European Union, and we decided to sort them out and install them on the shelves and start a real library. So here, for example, you have books for the teachers. Uh, these books can help them, you know, on their day-to-day -day lesson plans, activities, and, uh, and should benefit the students' learning. 
Here, another example, uh, we started at the dictionaries and some methods in French, uh, so also for different ages uh, in the school. And Regine uh, also started at books and worked on the inventory. Okay, so we also have dictionaries in Creole. So the kids have both languages here in French and in Creole. They also have romance in French. They also have books in Creole as well for their, you know, for their leisure. Um, over here we have our textbooks. So basically when the school year starts, the kids will actually come here and get it, their textbooks. We also have a database that we created for the kids, so that for the teachers and the kids. So if a teacher, for example, wants to take check out a book, he can come here and make sure, you know, find out exactly what kind of books that we have in the library and check one out. 